Thanks for tuning in to Stay Sharp with Razor Leaf, your secret weapon for all things digital and manufacturing. In this episode, we continue the conversation with Jen and Jonathan about partnerships. But this time, it is focused on what happens when life happens and they take a turn in an unfavorable direction. Jen shares her insights on how to handle these sensitive situations. Partnership intentions can change over time, and it is not a bad thing as long as it's discussed in a clear and transparent manner. Even when the decision is to part ways, it can happen on a positive note. Let's tune in with Jen and Jonathan and gain some of their wisdom. Welcome back to Stay Sharp with Razorly, our podcast about all things digital related to products and manufacturing. And uh, I am one of your hosts, Jonathan Scott. And you're probably thinking, this seems weird. Why is he talking first? (laughs) <laughs> or at least if you listen to our other episodes, you'd be thinking that. It's because this week I get to play host of the podcast since Jen is our special guest. So welcome, Jen. Um, Thank you. <laughs> seems ridiculous <laughs> since we're co-hosting this every week, but you know. Um, the reason though we're doing that is we're coming back to a topic we touched on once before that you are an expert for. So I'm glad we're we're doing this to have you Um, as our special guest this week. And that topic is about partnership, right? And in this space, we we talk a fair amount about the technology and projects and vendors and how you get things done and, you know, all around this this topic of digital. Um, And the idea of partnerships, who you work with, who you bring to the table, who you put on your team to do projects in this space is pretty important. And we, we touched on it once before, I think we've got more we can cover today. But before we dig into that, Jen, can you remind the audience of your background and what you do and that kind of thing about why you're an expert in this area? I can, although I, I got to tell you, every time somebody calls me an expert in anything, I'm like, Gah! no, that <laughs> implies way too much. Uh, I have a lot of experience in part. I, I know that feeling, right? Um, we, we do that on other podcasts. <laughs> and you're like, oh, he's the expert. I'm like, who? Where's he? Where's the expert? <laughs> right. But yeah, nonetheless. Don't, don't set, yeah, don't set that. But um, so yeah, I've been in, a, and I think, you know, I gave a fuller description um, from our first podcast on how to choose uh, the right partner. So if anybody really wants to get into my whole story, they can listen to that or go out to LinkedIn. It's it's kind of encapsulated in some of that too. Um, but I joined Razor Leaf a couple years ago. Um, and, you know, every time I listen to your introduction or somebody else's introduction, I'm like, okay, I've been doing partnership, they're focused on partnerships for about as long as you've been in the PLM space. So whereas I actually learn a whole lot about the technology in co-hosting this, um, hoping to bring a little bit of the my experience with partnerships, um, worked at two different companies that were focused primarily on component technology. And as part of you know providing components to other software vendors it's an ongoing relationship it's not a you know it's, it's not a point sale it's not something that you do once and walk away it's an ongoing relationship so there's a lot of similarities between um, relate partnerships and actual relationships so maybe this will sound a lot like marriage counseling <laughs> I don't know um, it's, it's possible um, but you're right when you said we focus a lot on the technology itself. Um, and that's not just here on the podcast. It's not just, you know, with our, our customers and our prospects. It's act- the industry in general yeah. focuses a lot on technology because as difficult as technology is, sometimes it's a whole lot easier than people. Yep. Um, but until the technology, and it may be coming, deploys itself <laughs> and works on its own, it could become like AI is a uh, thing. Okay. Um, you know, people are still going to play an important role and who you choose to partner with is is going to be critical. I think that's, uh, yeah, well said, right? We do focus on technology probably too much in this industry sometimes. And it does have a lot to do with what's what we know, what we think we know, and what's tangible and easiest to deal with. And the right. people part can be more challenging. So it it's good for us coming back to this topic, um, like others that we've done on the podcast, where it's like, let's touch on something other than the tech, because it can be just as important to the kinds of work people are trying to do. And goals that they have. So, I mean, coming back to that, like you said, last time we talked on this topic, we use the analogy about relationships a lot, which is we makes did. sense because we're talking about partnership, which is kind of relationship. But um, I just to level set, I think for the audience a little bit, I want to mention 
the kinds of partnerships that we're talking about, because it would be easy just diving in to pigeonhole this into, oh, you mean like a partnership between two tech companies, like one where where one tech company licenses somebody else's tech? And, a, right. and sure, we can be talking about that. That's one kind. But we're also right. talking about that, you know, you engage, you know, you as maybe an end customer of some kind of digital product solution, engage with a partner, a reseller, a vendor, a and who knows, right? Teams of people, this can apply to a lot of topics, but I just want to level set. We're not talking about a specific thing here. We're talking about partnerships right. in general, right? Right. We're, we're talking about leaning into someone else's expertise or experience to augment and your own and to achieve a particular object, objective. Right. And how you do that and so. why you might do that a certain way and, and what do you do when you get bumps in the road, all those things, right? But but that's that's the common thing is, you're trying to work with another organization, another team, and get to some shared objective. Right. And I think last time, you know, we talked a lot about, um, it, was, it was how to choose the right mm-hmm. partner, right? So it was a, a lot about knowing what you need, where you want to go, what kind of expertise you need, um, knowing your timeline, your budget, um, why you want to do it. Like, are you going to, you know, to compress your time to market? Are you going to accelerate innovation or, you know, like, Basically, what are you doing? Um, but we kind of got to the end of that podcast and we're like, what happens when things don't always go exactly as planned? Right. Um, so that's that's uh, the, the leaning into partnership is is kind of the the topic for today. Yeah. Or at least that's the, the nice way of saying what happens when you don't get what you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's what, what happens when life that's happens. That's right. That's right. The answer to my question, by the way, is experience. That's what somebody told me a long time ago. Experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. I'm like, all right, fair enough. That's true. Right. When it's true, and it and it generally speaking can well leveraged experience helps you get further to what yeah, you want. Exactly. All right. So digging into that a little bit, like you said last time, we talked about how to pick a partner, things to look for, mm-hmm. things to consider. I remember we talked about aligning core values and open communication, and we don't need to rehash the episode here. People can go listen to that one, but. So picking up on that thread of when things don't go quite right or they're not exactly what you want, you know, how, how do we dig into that? What's, what are the things that can happen that we need to think about and how we'd be ready to deal with that? All right. So it's, you know, we're assuming largely that you did do all the right things, right. you know, as you know, when you're going out that you did define what you want and who you want to work with. And you, and you did go through and align with some core values, which as you go through the relationship become even more important um, because it's, those are what you lean back on when you do hit the bumps in the road, just like, you know, in, in any sort of relationship, doesn't even have to be marriage, it could be a friendship. Um, but it's, you know, it's just basically, we're assuming that you did that, but there are also cases where, you know what, you're in the middle of a partnership. And you maybe you didn't do all that prep. I'm sorry, you started the partnership before you last listened to our first right. podcast on it. <laughs> so you made some mistakes along the way, but you are where you are. So today is a little bit more about talking about when life happens. Right. Or I guess the best place to start would be kind of preparing for when life happens. You've started your partnership. How do you how do you prevent or how do you active maintenance, proactive right. maintenance on a relationship or a partnership to make sure that you're going in the right direction? Um, and I think the, the biggest thing is, or one of the biggest things, and I know that this is something we do with our customers, right? Is you project manage it, Mm -hmm. right? So you have, you have a roadmap. You've, you've basically said, Hey, this is where we want to go. These are the checkpoints along the way. This is how we're going to know that we're getting to where we want to be. Um, and as a matter of fact, it's when we were talking about a marriage analogy, I actually worked with someone and short story, his, he and his wife, on their anniversary every year, go to the same spot out in the mountains and sit down and talk about their life plan and review like where they are and how like, which. That was, sounds so healthy. Like married. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I think I was married 30 years before I heard that. I'm like, wow, really, like really behind the eight ball. <laughs> um, never having done that. But it's, it is a good way of like kind of saying, okay, regular checkpoints to see, are we progressing? And the more that you have those set and the more that you adhere to them and have those conversations, the more aware you are when things come up. Right. When they're like, well, you know what, this, this happened, this, this wasn't, wasn't supposed to happen that way, you know, and 
you know, t- tying it back to again, and I promise I'll stop on the marriage thing, but like, you know, <laughs> everybody goes into it. Everybody's happy. Everybody's excited. And then you hit like stressors mm-hmm. and you read about these, right? Like buying a new house, changing jobs, having kids. Right. Um, and those are all the good stressors. Right. You know, there's also things like you know, sickness and or losing a job and things like that, that kind of tend to disrupt your carefully laid plans. Right. Um, that's, that's the part of which like, if you're, if you have a known objective, if you have a, a shared goal or shared vision and you're checking your progression against that, like I said, you're more likely to notice when things are going off track. And the easiest time to contra- correct those going off track is as soon as that happens, or as soon as it starts in that general right. direction. Or as soon as you can tell that they're even heading off track, right? I mean, as early as possible. Right. Right? And, and that, you know, I don't want to oversimplify anything that we're talking about, but it reminds me of what we talked about in the previous episode about open communication, right? So what you mm-hmm. were just saying about having a, a roadmap or a plan of where are we going together? I mean, even that is an example of the open communication that you want to have in these kinds of partnerships. That if you didn't do it up front, right? You jumped in maybe right. a little early. You didn't do everything quite right. Well, there's no time like the present to start and say, okay, you know what? Let's just let's sit down a level set. Let's make sure we're all on the same page about where we're going, where we want to get to, and time frames, and how often do we check in and talk? Because it's getting right to your point of if something's going to go sideways, let's talk about it as soon as we know, as soon as we even think that maybe something's not right, so that we can talk about right. how to correct. Right, because you're in this together. That's the whole point. You're in a, it's a partnership and you're working towards that same goal. So, um, you know, and it's, again, it doesn't have to be bad things, right? It can be a change in priorities. Hey, you know what? We're moving from doing this particular business to where we're actually expanding. We're going in this particular direction or we're bringing on some new people or we lost this guy. Like it's, it's continuing to build that sense of team. Mm -hmm. Um, And as you're going through that, the other thing I would say um, is to document those sorts of discussions and the sorts of de- decisions that you take based on what's happening. Just because you're not sure that everybody's going to be on the same page at all points. I know that as I've gotten a little older, my memory's not quite. Say it isn't so. steel trap that it Say used it to be. Say it isn't so. It doesn't happen to me either. Never. <laughs> okay, just your busy schedule That's it. then. Sure. It's not your memory. <laughs> In any case, it's good to document the changes that you made to the original plan and also not just the changes you made, but kind of why you made right. them, what the options were and why they weren't chosen. Because again, when you revisit things, there may be like a little further down, there may be an additional change that, you know what, actually changed that decision that you made. So you can go back and revisit and be like, okay, you know what, we have more revenue coming in now or we have a different focus now. So that changes the original decision. That I can think of a number of times, you know, in, in my past work experience where we've had partnerships, relationships across companies, that sort of thing, where what you're talking about absolutely would have, might not have solved a problem or a challenge that was coming up, but it sure would have made it simpler to deal with, right? Would have made it more straightforward right. that, well, we already decided that. We decided that before. And it's, it's usually around, like you said, events. I mean, likening it to, to life events. Lots of events happen in the life of organizations. Somebody leaves, somebody mm-hmm. new gets hired, somebody's got a strong personality, um, you know, somebody's got a new objective, whatever it might be. And if you don't have something to go back and look at and say, well, we did talk about this and this is what we decided. Okay, you can change it. Doesn't mean that it's set in stone, but at least you get that context to go back to. So it's sort of a, an even relationship and, and conversation instead of a, that's not what we wanted and we never asked for, you know, you can avoid a lot of that stuff. You can, and it's and it's particularly when you're bringing someone new on, or someone has left, and you and you go back and you're like, why do we why did we right. do that? If that person's gone, you can't ask them. And if you know, and it's usually the first the new person coming on, being like, why did you do it that way? Well, we looked at these things. Well, right. now those things have changed, so let's revisit that. And I think the the other piece of that is realizing that you need to be flexible, mm-hmm. right? Realizing that. Um, you created the roadmap, you created the objective and the plan in, let's say, an experienced vacuum, but in a vacuum. Like things hadn't happened yet. It's like when you plan a vacation, it's all going to go perfectly well, right? Nobody's going to get lost. Nobody's going to like, no, nobody's wallet's going to be stolen. Nobody, no flights are been missed. <laughs> and then like none of the things. Right. But, you know, 
anticipation is great, but when you get into real life, you do you do need to be flexible. And if you if you can't have that right mindset, you're going to find yourself locked into decisions that are no longer really the best decision for your company. Right. Um, that being said, you can't go completely off the rails, right? You can't be like every every up every new happening that comes along can't require a modification. So you do have to have a, a, a balance of flexibility and discipline to stay the course. Um, sometimes you just have to ride through rough patches, but you know, sometimes you do need to make adjustments. Well, that reminds me of another, um, another thing that we talked about previously on this about you know, alignment of values and making sure you're on the same page with whoever you're partnering with, right? Because that conversation mm-hmm. is tough. If you just don't see things eye to eye, you know, one person, something goes wrong and they want to make a change immediately. Uh, the other party, if their feeling is, no, you ride things through and you look for the long view and that, you know, that's, it's tough to rationalize that. But hopefully if you did do that piece, right, you did that step well, you can have that conversation, right? You can talk about what you want to change right. versus what you want to stick to and, and you can make those decisions together. Well, and, and to your point, there's, it's never too late to have that discussion on core values. Sometimes when a conflict comes up, that's a great opportunity to be like, okay, well, this is the way we look at things. Like this is, this is our primary, this is our focus, and this is how we want to run things. What's been your experience? And it, I mean, you can sometimes uncover things that you should have known beforehand mm-hmm. or should have asked beforehand, but even knowing them at a later point helps you understand your partner's perspective and what they're going for. Now, at, at some point may, depending on how big the difference is, that may require some bigger changes. But, you know, let's hope that I, let's, let's be optimistic and hope that identifying them and recognizing each other's perspective helps you work better together. Let's, I want to throw up a, a specific example on the table and maybe not super specific because the, the details don't matter, but mm-hmm. uh, the kind of challenge that I've seen come up plenty of times, whether it's, you know, two technology companies partnering or, you know, a vendor of software selling to a customer and they're partnered somehow, you know, scope is one that comes up a lot, right? Like something changes in the scope. Somebody needs something different. Or I, you know, the vendor says, I can't do that. Or the customer says, I need to have that. Something changed in my business. I got to have it. That's the kind of thing we're talking about, right? Life happens. Somebody needs something mm-hmm. different. You know, now what is it? You know, somebody has to pay more. Somebody has to take longer. There are lots of options that could result. And like I said, the details aren't critical exactly what the situation might be. But that's the kind of when life happens Those we're talking kind of- about, right? Right. Those are the kind of conversations we're having is like, okay, um, we now no longer need this piece of it, but this piece that we said was going to be in phase two, that's a whole lot more important now. It's a bigger rock. We got that. So, you know, we, you know, hopefully we realize that it might, it might cost a little more or it might take a little bit longer, but it's a higher priority now. It's, yeah, it's those kind of conversations or it's, Hey, you know what? We got a little bit further into it and this isn't really what we thought it was going to be. This isn't working. We're changing our processes and, and we need your implementation to change for it. So what, So I mean, uh, I'll ask the tough question, which, you know, I think we'd, we'd like to keep all of this conversation as positive as we can. <laughs> but I mean, we are talking about when challenges happen. What happens when people can't see eye to eye when it, you know, you have that discussion about scope and somebody says, well, I need this. And the other folks say, I hear you, but you you can't have it or we can't do it or whatever it might be. And there isn't a, hey, the open communication led us to a mutually beneficial resolution and off we go, you know, so when it you can't ride off into the sunset, what, what now? I mean, what, what do we do then? Well, one of the things that you had brought up earlier and you just mentioned again is the open, honest communication. Now, like up until this point, we've been preparing, like we've been communicating honestly as things happen so that, and we've been adjusting things accordingly. Um, you really have to continue that even when you hit the big bumps. And matter of fact, it's, it's most important then. Um, and I would say it's also probably the hardest point, um, not just the open, honest communication. And as soon as you know that there's a problem, but also you have to take yourself a little bit out of, and this is, this is, it's like a knee-jerk reaction for almost every person on the face of the planet is the blame game. Well, no, no, no. I said right. that you know, <laughs> we're just 
we're somehow preconditioned to there's there's a right and there's a wrong. Mm-hmm. And I want to make sure to establish you're wrong. Right. And, and that's, while can be very satisfying, is almost never the basis for a successful resolution. Yeah. Um, so I think one of the most important things to do allow, along with the honest communication is assume positive intent. Let's assume that we're all looking for the same solution, that we're all looking for a solution. Right. It might not be the same one. Um, it really doesn't matter how you got here. I mean, it's it's a hard thing to acknowledge, but in the end, you'll have some cleanup to, based on how you got there. You'll have some some adjustments that you need to make moving forward. But in the end, in solving this particular problem, whatever it is, it doesn't matter how you got there. What matters is you have this problem in front of you. Now let's fix it. Once we get through this, let's figure out how to not do it, right? That's what postmortems are about. Right. Let's figure out how not to get here again. So I think that's those are two of the biggest things. So um, it reminds me a little bit of, uh, and maybe I'm going to connect the dot that shouldn't be connected, but uh, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, right? One of those principles mm-hmm. is about looking for a win-win, right? So in any transaction, in any interaction, relationship like this, how can both parties win instead of looking at interactions like that, challenges like this, as a win-lose kind of situation. Like you said, a blame game. Like, well, this happened. It's your fault. Therefore, I shouldn't have to pay. Whether that's pay money or pay time or pay emotionally. It's not my fault. So it's yours. You have to solve it. That sort of right. you know, win-lose mentality is what he's talking about in the book. Like, you know, try and avoid that because you're, you're going to do a lot better long-term in relationships if you're looking for how do we both come out of this with what we need? And it right. feels like some of what you're talking fact, about, right? Yeah. Matter of fact, I will, I will, I will see your book <laughs> recommendation and raise you one. Um, because it's, it's kind of the next point is um, if you're going to stay out of the win-lose mindset, okay, the first thing that you can do is own your own part mm-hmm. in the challenge, own your own part in the problem. Um, one of my favorite uh self-help kind of guys, is Jocko Willink. And he was a... He's the SEAL, um, right? He okay. is. He is a yep. Navy SEAL. He wrote a book called Extreme Ownership. And it's and it, it talks very much about like whatever. There is always something that you could have done better as well. Own that piece. And matter of fact, if you are the first one to do that, it really kind of tends to set the tone because mm-hmm. people are like, oh, shit. Like very rarely do... I mean... Yes. Does it happen that somebody would jump in and be like, see, I told you it was your fault. (laughs) Mostly the reaction is soul searching across the board, right? Like, oh, wow. I mean, yeah, that's true. You could have done that better. But since you said that, I I, I probably could have done this piece better. Right. Or we at least, we couldn't have foreseen that that was going to happen. So owning your own part is a big part of, you know, solving the problem and creating that, that open exchange. Yeah. Start by bringing your defenses down rather than putting them up. Right. 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 Um, That's certainly going to get you to problem solving faster to your point. It is. And it is. And then, I mean, it also helps with the, um, assuming the positive intent, Mm -hmm. right? Because if, if you're working with someone and you let your defenses down like that intentionally, then they're going to see them like, Oh, they really are less focused on pointing out who's right and wrong and more focused on finding a solution. It's funny how much this goes back to the the idea of the right way to get into the partnership to begin with. Because if you find yourself at this stage listening to the advice that you're offering, Jen, right? And somebody's going, yeah, but this partner I've got, I don't think I could do that because as soon as I let my defenses down, they're going to be on the attack. Hopefully you're thinking to yourself, wow, did I get into the right relationship if, if that's how I expected that we would behave together? Is that as we ran into challenges, I'd have to be on the defense all the time because they're going to try and take advantage or whatever it is, you know, it, it takes you right back to hmm, think about those things before you, before you jump in to work together. Well, and it's funny how, how often nobody does consider core values mm-hmm. or like, it's just like, okay, do they, do they hit the technologies? Do they hit the skills that I need? Personality is a big thing. And, and companies do have personalities. I mean, it's, you know, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to name any, but certain organizations are known for their ability to partner or not partner yeah. or their aggressive sales style or, you know, it's, it, and it really, companies have culture and it shows. 
Um, and that's, and the important thing about core values is, is that's when it's, that's when they're important is when things are not going well is because you've got that shared sense of direction a shared sense of this is how we respond to challenges. That reminds me of uh, something else that when we're on this topic that I think of, and this is my own baggage that I, I bring to the conversation experience as in our industry years and years ago, right? When I was starting to work with some technology vendors and even back when I was in engineering, um, I would sort of convince myself that, well, you can set some of that to the side. It's not as critical as make sure the technical <laughs> stuff's right because you know, it's just a quick project. It's just a short thing. Probably won't run into any problems. Won't need to worry about that. It won't, you know, we won't get to the stage where there's any issues. And now with experience that I look back on it, I'm like, don't kid yourself, right? I mean, that's the place where I guess I'm going to offer some advice on our episode today. <laughs> yes, please don't do. Don't <laughs> kid yourself, right? Any relationship that you're going to get into with a technology partner, somebody's going to sell you something, you know, somebody you're going to sell something to, right? I mean, for the right? tech vendors out there listening to that's this... Um, you know, don't kid yourself. It won't be smooth. I mean, and it's fine. It's not a problem, but just don't kid yourself because when you stop, you know, sort of making these ridiculous assumptions that, well, I'll just have a relationship and it'll be totally transactional. There'll be no people involved. We'll just do it and it'll be done. It'll be great. The instant you convince yourself of that, you've set yourself up for a problem because you're not ready for the things that will come up. And, you know, everybody knows this if they just sit and try to listen to what I'm saying for a minute. Like, yeah, you're right, you know. Well, that's uh, but but that's the the very basis of every self help book that I've ever read. Right? It's like you read it and you're like, duh. <laughs> of course, that's that's exactly. Thank you for putting in writing what I should have known right. anyway. But you did have to read um, it. You're right. <laughs> you had to read it to believe it. <laughs> well, and it's and I would say it's it's even not just assume that like things will be fine. It's also recognize the red flags. Mm-hmm. You know, don't think that like oh you know what this is yeah the. the I don't like the, 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 whether it's the tone or like the way they respond or like, you know, you can see those things pretty quickly. Don't ignore them. Don't think, well, you know, I mean, maybe the first time, maybe they're just having a bad day. Right. But like, if it's a consistent kind of thing, pay attention to that. No, that's a great point. And and you're right on the skills as, as far as like, generally speaking, if I go into something and I'm looking at two companies and one is they, they hit all the boxes that I want, but they've got absolutely no flexibility. And the other one, they hit most of the boxes, but they're super easy to work with. They want they they ask a lot of questions. They want to create a solution that is ideal for me. I'm going with them, even if they don't have all the boxes checked yet, because they will. Yep. If it's I'm important to them, my company is important to them. They'll make good. That's a great point, and I it's uh, makes me think of a, a corollary to what I was saying a minute ago. Don't kid yourself; something will go wrong. Also, don't kid yourself about the kind of relationship that maybe you're forming, right? Because what you just said reminded me of some of the things I would think incorrectly, by the way, um, much (laughs) earlier in my career when it's like, oh, it doesn't matter if they're hard to deal with because I'm just buying a software tool from them, right? And you convince yourself, I just need this thing. It's just a transaction. Reality is no. And it's perfect. It hits all the boxes. It checks all the boxes. It's great. But the reality is, no, you're, you're buying it from them to use it for a year, two years, 10 years, however long it might be. And, you know, you're, you're choosing a relationship with, is what you're choosing. You're not choosing just a piece of software or whatever it might be, a piece of tech. It's, there's more to it than that. So be eyes wide open about it, to your point. Well, because you're, it, the, it's exactly what we're talking about, right? Even if it checks all the boxes, that's all your boxes right at this very instant. Right. What are the chances, that's why we're talking about it, that things are going to go a little bit, you know what, You, I didn't know I needed these five boxes. Oh, sorry, we don't have that. And the roadmap, several years. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if you get somebody else like, oh, okay, totally understand. Let's let's work with you and see what we can do there. From the start of the day to the end of the day, I change what I want for dinner. So it <laughs> makes sense that maybe you'd want to plan for flexibility over the long term. It, it is important. Um, and I would say, like, once you get through, you know, again, as a continuing partnership, once you get through the hardest spots, reset your expectations. Mm. Just as far as the, you know, continue doing what you're doing, but reset your expectations based on what you've known, based on the partner, based on, based on how they reacted, what you've been able to achieve, and see if, you know what, 
okay, we were we were tech and base every like three months quarterly, right? For, for right now, as we get through this, let's let's reset that and let's let's start checking in on a monthly basis right. or every two weeks. Or if things are, you know, what we got through that, things are going smooth. Let's push that out to every, every six months, but just make sure that you never let go of that constant connection. That being said. Not all problems are solvable. I was just going to say, so what happens with all this great stuff we're talking about, about how you can get through it when it actually does just go wrong? You're done. That's it. What? So what do we do? Well, I I think the the biggest thing is, number one, recognize it. Mm -hmm. Recognize, okay, we've gotten to a point that, and this is more of an internal discussion, right? We've gotten to the point that this is no longer going to serve us. This is no longer a partner that we're... We're going to work with for whatever reason. Right. Um, the biggest thing I would say to you is, I mean, I mean, you have to go through and unwind all the different legal agreements and things like that. But the biggest thing I would, would counsel you to do is just remember that in the end, we work in a very small industry. I don't know how, I mean, it's you and I have been both in, in the 3D engineering industry for quite some time. There's a lot of people and people don't stay in companies anymore and you don't want to burn any bridges because you're never sure where that person might end up or how they might uh, talk about the experience with your company. So above all, you want to, if you have to leave a partnership for any reason, you want to do so with dignity and basically and forgiveness and be like, okay, this is bad. We can't keep going this way. It's nobody's fault. We're going to go ahead and choose to disagree right. and move on. No scorched earth is but what you're saying. No scorched yeah. earth. I mean, it's just it's just a bad, I mean, it's, you know, again, with marriages, right? Yeah, don't talk bad about your ex. Yeah. Just, they know people. People know them. It's, you know. Eventually, it'll come back. But you know what? I, um, I want to dig into that a little bit because I will say in the business world, sometimes people will take the contrarian view of that and say, look, you know, winner takes all and, you know, you need to put people in their place. Like, I'll say maybe more aggressive attitudes. But mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think if we just play devil's advocate for a minute and say, let's say you took that approach, right? your partnership falls apart, you should just get everything you can out of it and terminate it. And so what? You know, that kind of thing. I mean, you have a take on that? I mean, I, I feel like I've seen that and I've seen it cause problems for people, but just, I don't know. I So before I give my take on that, what what problems have you seen it cause after the fact? Yeah, it, the reputational things that you mentioned, right? Where mm-hmm. it's subtle, it's, it's sort of long running, but, uh, you know, I can think of a few cases where afterward, you know, you'll you'll hear that name again, whether it's the company name, whether even it's the industry, because, you know, you recognize maybe it maybe it's just kind of the ecosystem they lived in. But you're hesitant, you know, and anytime you tell a story about it, you, you mention it to somebody like, yeah, I had this one interaction. It was really rough. It that story lives on. And it reminds me of that. Um, you know, what do they say for every positive? That's what I was just that's what I was just going to like. For every, I think it's eight times. Right. For every, so for every positive statement, like a, a negative experience is repeated eight times. Right. And that's what it reminds me of. So it's, you know, play, I, I wanted to play devil's advocate just to get into that for a minute because I've seen people take that attitude. They're like, it's business, it's not personal. And so they're, the way they approach it feels very, I don't know. They stop worrying about the feelings and and what seem like good principles to them, and they do what they think somebody wants them to do. Maybe a, a, what they think mm-hmm. a boss wants to do, and it feels like it just never turns out well. And I think that's the thing. I mean, there will always be right the exceptions that you have got to like get out as fast as you can, and uh, those are those are not the kind of situations we're talking about. This is more the situation of like, okay, we've got no point. We're we're not getting what we need. You can't give it to us, and that's okay, but we have to end it. Right. We're not going for the, you know, okay, you blew up our building, and this is a really a big problem. But but you're exactly right. The, the reason that you don't do that is because people and companies have long memories, mm-hmm. and there are a lot of times that um, moving forward, you, you just, it's things that reflect or... Um, affect 
your relationship with somebody that you don't even really know about. And it's because they've talked to somebody else and they've heard this, that, or the other thing, you know, and they come into that, into the relationship or into the partnership with that, that colored view. You don't want that. Well, it's funny. You don't want it for you and you don't want it for the other company either. It's funny. I, you know, in the way that we're talking about this, like, well, if this is neutral, right. And you could be here and you, you don't really want to be negative in terms of how you exit that relationship because that can mm-hmm. carry forward for a long time. I've seen it go the opposite way, right? Which is the really, the extra benefit of exiting a tough situation well, right? Coming out of it, you know, doing it with with grace, with some forgiveness for the other party for, hey, let's find the best exit for both of us out of this. I've seen that work really well, actually. Very good examples of that where, you know, the, the folks that, that we've hired here but it was right. out of a difficult situation that they're like, you know, I was really impressed with how you guys dealt with that. That was tough. I, you know, maybe my company didn't deal with it well, but 10 years later, they look back on it and they're like, yeah, you know, I feel like you guys you were really fair in, in how you did it. And I'm not trying to toot raise Lee's horn. I've seen it in, in other contexts too, right? right. But yeah. it's, it's a good lesson to learn that in the way that the negative can really hurt you, the positive can actually really help you reputationally later in these kinds of situations. Without a doubt, without a doubt, because everybody knows that life happens. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that you're going to run into challenges and it's how you handle those, even the worst ones that gets noticed. And, you know, I don't know how many times like I've heard the situation like, yeah, you know, this company was honest enough to tell me they couldn't do what I wanted to do and help unwind the relationship. And I really valued that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back to them with something I know they can solve. Because I trust them to identify when they can't rather than like, oh, yeah, it's fine. We, we can do that. Right. You know, because it's again, it goes back to core values. It goes back to honest communication and really wanting to partner. Yeah. And realizing what that means. Funny. You know, bad news equals more business. It happens, though, right? Graceful handling of bad news. <laughs> Fair enough. Not just bad Not news. Just bad news. <laughs> bad news, period. Sorry. <laughs> Well, Jen, we should probably leave it there. I think we've we've covered maybe the thing that we didn't dig into last time on partnerships, uh, which is you know, what happens when the unexpected happens or when life happens. And I feel like we've we've dug back into our analogy very well related to relationships, <laughs> friendships, marriages, right. whatever those might be, and how it relates to organizational relationships and partnerships and things like that. Um, I think that that analogy has been still very appropriate in terms of how you deal with things when things go wrong. Any, right. any parting thoughts from you as we're wrapping up? Um, I think that I would just restress the, the alignment of core values mm-hmm. and, you know, a, as early as you can in the, in the relationship, but even if it, even if you don't do it up front, doing it when conflict arises and positive, open, honest communication. Which again, right? Aren't those the same things that you're looking for in any relationship? Indeed. Good. Well, I think this has been another good conversation about that, um, about partnerships and relationships and what we should try to keep in mind with good analogies. And uh, I want to (laughs) say thanks, Jen, for being the guest today. Uh, sure. appreciate all your, it's ex- fun to be on this side it of is, things, isn't it? Um, it is. and I appreciate all your experience, right? What, what you're bringing to the table and the, the number of times you've worked through these things to help us all sort of see that perspective. So thank you to Jen for being our guest today. Um, for those of you listening, if you have any comments or questions on this topic, things that you, you know, you'd want us to dig into in the future, or just things you want to share, please. Get those out to us through social media, through email. You can find us on the website, any number of ways you can find us. But please do reach out. We're also happy to hear ideas for new episodes related to this or or even uh, totally unrelated. But anything about all things digital, manufacturing and product related. So uh, we'd love to hear from you. Please reach out. But with that, I'll say thanks again, Jen. And to everybody, stay sharp. Thanks. Thanks for being here and listening to this episode of Stay Sharp with Razor Leaf. If you have any lingering questions from this podcast, we'd love to answer it for you. Just leave us a comment on our post or send an email to podcast at razorleaf.com. We appreciate all the feedback we receive. 
And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast platform or on our YouTube channel. Until next time, stay sharp.